Hi, this is MXUX. I'm just going to do a quick video here on, uh, and this is pure speculation on my part. I'm just trying to fill in the blanks here. They're talking about renting out or bringing in partners to use the excess capacity at Lordstown Motors. That is going to be the subject of this video. I'm also going to briefly go over the revolving line of uh, stock slash credit they have and also some ideas for the um, Lordstown Endurance consumer version. All right, thanks, guys. Let's get into this. Hi, this is MXUX. This is, uh, I'm going to try to do this quick and with energy. Um, who could use the excess LMC plant capacity? And this is my opinion. This is in no way confirmed or this is no inside information. Do not, this is not investing advice. Do your own DD. I'm just doing this because it sounds so horrible when they say, oh, Lordstown is renting that space. It's like, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're renting, uh, you know, some rooms for the night or something. Anyway, let's just get into this. Okay, now, uh, the present CEO of Lordstown is also on the board of directors of Nuvi. And she's also a Burns acolyte. She worked with Burns at um, Workhorse. Anyway, this just came out. Uh, what is this? 8, oh, 8, 15, 21? Well, this is, this, 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 is, this is older. Let me just get through this. I'm going to go through the rest of this. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Uh, they're going to uh, use Levo's which is a joint, uh, which is funding by Stone Peak, which is a uh, kind of an investment banking firm that was into a lot of oil and gas type things, and now they're getting into ESG. Uh, Nuvi, who does uh, fleet, uh, I mean, uh, vehicle to grid uh, charging, and that technology has partnered with them, uh, Stone Peak, and they've created Levo. And they have this cool fleet as a service leasing. Okay. And to make school buses more. But this fleet as a service can be used anywhere, uh, not just with school buses. And basically the way it works is uh, they come in, they, as I understand it. They put in all the charging infrastructure. They provide the vehicles. Uh, they do all the management. It's all cloud-based. Uh, they do the vehicle-to-grid management. They allow these school districts or other fleet holders to uh, either use their batteries as a backup or to sell energy back to the grid at high demand, which creates cash positive cash flow for their fleets this is amazing and this is going to be very necessary as the number of uh, electric vehicles grows uh, but this is a great plan and a new v holding vehicle to grid um, they're with bluebird here uh, leading independent designer and manufacturer of school buses so new v and um, uh, Bluebird have gotten together, and, you know, if you've ridden a school, I mean, you see those little Bluebird placards on everything. Uh, so they are going to uh, partner with Bluebird, and Bluebird is going to supply the buses, and uh, Nuvi through uh, Levo, Levo Mobility, is going to put the project together, put the funding together for the project, put the infrastructure in, you know, they do everything. It's a turnkey solution. So, you know, you imagine a school board. they got some mechanics in a garage. We're going to electrify everything. What are they going to do? They're going to go to this uh, uh, Levo, and Levo is going to give everything to them at one set monthly lease price, including the vehicles, and then um, they're going to be able to generate uh, revenue off of their, uh, their fleet batteries when they're not in use. And Levo's going to handle, uh, again, cloud-based telemetrics and maintenance and everything. So this is a great deal. This is a great deal for the infrastructure program. This is the number one company, Bluebird, 
I don't know. I guess there's others. I don't know really who they are. But this is a stock here. Okay, and we're going to go over this in a little bit. But again, Stone Peak Partners, Limited Partnership. There's one of their very familiar school buses. Uh, all Bluebird Type C and D electrical buses that are manufactured with the uh, newbies. They, they, will, they will manufacture uh, everything with the new V and they're going to have the new V charging station and they're going to be able to okay here we go virtual power plants okay uh leverage connected stabilize the grid okay and uh again they're going to be able to um and this is fleet as a service model i think this is a great model i think this is a great business idea too bad it's not it's business to business or business to municipality it would be great if it was business to the consumer to offer the consumer the same thing uh anyway that's the big announcement that just happened and um i think this is going to be great and again this is going to uh, allow uh, give a turnkey solution to these school districts allow them to earn money off their batteries when they're not in use i think it's great and it's one price okay so it's very easy to budget it's very they don't have to have any technical expertise so this is a big deal so you may say well what does this have to do with the lordstown well uh i think they've got an order for 3500 of these buses something like that if they wanted to have a separate company um and they, I believe they do some of this on their own right now. Although, uh, let me see if I can find... Well, we're going to go through these tabs one by one. I'll just go talk about it when I find it. Anyway, for example, uh, they could uh, either send the uh, frames of the school buses to Lordstown. Or uh, Lordstown, I don't know if their frame capacity could make these frames. Uh, they could build out a line there with these uh, movable uh, carriers that carry the, the thing around. And they could engineer large hub motors for these buses. Okay. Get, put hub motors on them. Install the battery packs. In other words, do the skateboard at Lordstown for the bus. Put it on a train. Ship it down to Alabama. Or uh, I think they're in Mobile. I'm not sure. Georgia maybe. And they put the uh, body on top of the frame. And boom, they're done. So, that would seem to make sense to me, okay? Uh, that's one use uh, that uh, they could do. That Bluebird could contract the uh, manufacturing of their skateboards uh, out to um, Lordstown. Just an example. And let's just see here. Here's a new V. And here's the chart. The chart took a dive today. It looks like we're in 1039, a little bit up after hours. A little surprising on this news. I hold a position in this company, a small position. But I think it's a very exciting technology, and I think it's something that's really necessary to implement electrification. Here is Bluebird, and uh, Bluebird is under the symbol BLBD. Again, down on the day, but up up here at the very end, as you can see. And I believe after hours, well, they're unchanged after hours, but they did take a tip, tick up at the end. And uh, <coughs> anyway, um, let's just move here. Now, this is going through the uh, new V Lovo. Uh, uh, this is the new company uh, that they've uh, put together with uh, Stone Peak. Uh, Levo powered by Nuvi. So Levo is the like leasing entity and Nuvi uh, is the um, <clears throat> technology. Uh, Nuvi Stone Peak finalized Levo joint venture, 7 million to electrify fleets. Okay. Fleet as a model delivers turnkey solutions to fleets to quickly transition to electric vehicles. So. We're looking at fleet sales at Lordstown. The CEO is on the board of this company. Anyway, it would be great if they used uh, 
for some of these applications, the Lordstown Endurance as the fleet vehicle. And that's uh, uh, another thing that uh, how Lordstown could be involved in this. Uh, but anyway, I think it's a great uh, concept. Again, vehicle uh, V to grid EV fleet deployments. Again, using these dormant fleet batteries, selling power back to the grid when needed, generating revenue. Also, you know, when you build like a, a steam, if there's a hot water line or a steam line, they always put like a expansion joint in it. So it's like an upside down U and inlet comes in one side, outlet goes on the other side and it goes up and it goes over. And what that allows is when the when there's a lot of pressure, it allows it to the, the steam line to contract without busting and when there isn't that much pressure it allows it to expand without busting you know instead of the pipes busting again that's what the vehicle to grid does uh when the when the grid is under stress and it needs uh, uh power that expansion joint is the vehicle to grid software and then it brings in that power from those batteries to take up that demand when that u is expanding when that U contracts, when there's less demand, uh, the power flows from the grid into the battery of the vehicle. That's the easiest way to explain it in my mind. Anyway, fleet of a service, fleet fleet as a service for school buses, last mile delivery, rail ride hailing, and ride sharing, municipal services, and more. So, again, I hope that uh, they choose Lordstown to work with as their truck. It would actually... Uh, lower their uh, maintenance costs because of the design of the uh, Lordstown Endurance and the easy maintenance of the wheel motors. And uh, I would love to see this happen. I don't know that it's going to happen. But anyway, again, fixed monthly payment with no upfront cost. Oliva will provide EVs, uh, school buses, pickup trucks, charging infrastructure powered by Nuvi's Vita Grid platform, and charging state and station maintenance, energy management, and technical advice. So this is a great, you know, this is this is the new new here, and uh, hats off to Nuvi. Although Nuvi, their technology is not new. It's been worked on by a bunch of PhDs developed it like 20 years ago in anticipation of uh, web demand for electric vehicles. So this is all proven. Hats off to Stone Peak. You know, somebody like uh, Ernst & Young or uh, well, Goldman Sachs wouldn't fund something like this because they're too management class. You need these entrepreneurs in there. And again, uh, Nuvi uh, and Stone Peak to pursue $700 million joint venture Levo to deploy t turnkey electric vehicle charging and transportation as a service for school buses and other commercial fleets. So you get my drift here, and uh, whatever, you know, Levo Mobility, if they're deploying school buses, those skateboards can be built at Lordstown. If they're deploying last mile delivery vans, and uh, Lordstown's van isn't up yet, they can provide skateboards to that. If they are providing last mile delivery vans, and Lordstown's high top fan is in production, which it should be next year. Guess what? This, it can be part of this service as well, as well as the endurance fleet pickup. So anyway, this is just an idea uh, to bring in added manufacturing, um, kind of a lever that uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, at least, uh, you know, when you're throwing spitballs against the wall, this is something they could do. And then um, this is the Bluebird. Again, this is their site regarding um, electric school buses. But it's curious here. They don't really, they have a lot of, um, a lot of background here on, um, on why it's a good idea. And uh, see, national grants are coming up, financing. So V to grid revenue potential, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, and this will apply to commercial fleets as well, safe serviceability. Okay, they, Bluebirds, all, they, all the maintenance costs, you know, all this stuff is included. But now they don't have really, they have EV school bus news here. 
okay now they got these small buses and uh, they got these bigger buses but um they're expanding they don't say a lot about their manufacturing i i'm not familiar with this company that familiar but the point is that um i don't know if they're actually they they were talking here about um acquisition of a uh leading ev integrator in type a school bus micro anyway the point is i don't know how deep they are into manufacturing if they have the capacity to handle these bigger contracts and if they need you know some place like lordstown which they could actually use to do their own design of skateboard i mean the thing is the robots are there they don't have to buy robots they can put the portable uh mass production line in with the carts the little mobilized carts that roll around uh, they could build the skateboards there. The bodies, I'm sure they have this down to a science. And I don't know if they have to lighten those up or whatever. Anyway, uh, another company which I don't think is going to be part of this, but who? what do I know? Uh, I'm just uh, some guy. Maybe they're talking behind the scenes, but with that recent stock sale, I think Workhorse is out of the picture here now i think that new ceo wants to go a separate way but certainly uh, as you can see workhorse took a dive there during the day and it's up after hours there's the one day chart on workhorse as of today uh, you know workhorse has got to make uh, their changes they got to implement that as a mass production vehicle and they could do that at lordstown they could, uh, again, put in the line. The robots are there, blah, blah, blah. I don't have to go over and over and over again. They're going to do a redesign to make it heavier weight. You know, Steve Burns was the CEO of Workhorse, by the way. The present CEO of Lordstown also worked for Workhorse under Steve Burns. So there's kind of like this uh, connection already. And, uh, you know, if they ever wanted to go into mass production, this is in Ohio. They're in Cincinnati, which isn't that far. It's south from here. And again, they could truck the skateboards to a workhorse or whatever if they didn't want to do the full production there. But anyway, uh, just another idea of someone who could rent factory space or, as they say, rent factory space. I'd like to see uh, Len, uh, Levo Mobility partner with them. Workhorse, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Arkimoto. Arkimoto is looking to, to ramp up production. Um, they Here's their stock. It took a bump up at the end of the day. Uh, I, I, I have owned this stock in the past. I do not have a position in this stock right now. I have a small position in Workhorse. The uh, FUV, and I actually met the CEO of this, although he had a mask on, and I'm not sure it was him, but it's very nice. It was in a casual situation. Just told him how much I like the product. Anyway, the point is, uh, they're looking to expand their production. And I'll tell you something, Arkimoto, let's go to Hub Motors. Let's go to the Hub Motors that Lordstown is making in Ohio, okay? Uh, you can manufacture, you can set up a whole line there. Again, I don't want to go through everything again. Let's change over from what the, the drive system you have now. Let's go to hub motors on your front wheels there, or you could even go to three-wheel hub motors, but let's go to the hub motors on your front wheels there. And, uh, you know, you can put a, a little radiator in the middle. And then um, let me just see here. Now, this is, I think I have a better picture of this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, there it is. Wait, let's see this. There we go. This is what I want. This is a system that Arkimoto, they bought this company. And uh, Sandy Monroe, who works with Arkimoto, just implemented torque vectoring on their present motor configuration. Just think if you had electronic digital torque uh, vectoring with the Alafi hub motors right here. Put your radiator right here. Uh, I don't know if they're more efficient than the motor he has there. I don't know if they'll get better gas mileage or better EV mileage. You got a third wheel back there. You could put a third motor on there. Anyway, 
it's a thought and they're looking to go to mass production and again they could distribute these to europe and i think there'd be a great demand for these in asia if they can get the price down especially the ones with the flatbed truck on the back also europe anyway that's another idea of who could uh, uh and here's the arcimoto as it is now and again they have this motor configuration here but you know you could, you could just as easily put hub motors in here okay and have your radiator here your cooling system for your hub motors here and again you could have the dynamic the uh, digital torque vectoring okay arcimoto let's do it simplify your design lower your parts count build it at lordstown ship it out lake erie to asia okay here's another idea of someone uh this is the aptera and uh, this is this streamlined car and this is a really cool car and it's got the cooling in the uh in the body they put the radiator in the skin of the body and this has got three loffy motors in it i'm not sure what kind they have exactly but the point is some have two motors in it some have uh three this is another vehicle that could be produced at Lordstown. You know, Sandy Monroe, when he got involved with the Aptera first, and I have a video, I have many videos on Aptera in my, on my, web, uh, in my web collection on YouTube. He said he wanted to move to a production system that was uh, similar to the Viper, Dodge Viper. And the way the Dodge Viper worked, they had the mobile, again, the mobile uh, production line, which had those little carts that followed the tape in the floor, and they would go to different workstations. Some would be robotics, some would be humans. This is something, again, at Lordstown, I don't know how many extra robots, I think they had oh, 1,500 robots there. I don't know how many they're using in the present line, but they could probably forklift those over and configure lines, so forth. And again, the hub motors, whatever their secret sauce is, uh, Lordstown could put in a line or, uh, uh, you know, maybe they're using their present motors with uh, some kind of software control. Anyway, again, they could ship these to Europe, which I think is going to be a big market for these because of the small roads in Europe. And this is a great vehicle, self-charging, uh, can charge it on a 110 outlet, you know, uh, as you can the Endurance. Uh, but uh, that's a, a, a pretty cool vehicle. And then uh, I just wanted to add this at the end here, going over a couple other things. This is the Lordstown. This is the San Felipe 250 Lordstown truck. And I want to make, I want to put this out there to you, Lordstown. When we come out with the conversion, with the uh, commercial version, the, the the public version of the not the fleet truck, but the the public version of the Lordstown Endurance. Let's base it on this model. Let's use this graphic, okay? I don't know about the bumper. Maybe the bumper. Let's use the flares. Let's, uh, I know you have cooling incorporated. Let's incorporate the cooling in the flares. Let's raise the body a little bit. Let's put bigger tires on it. Let's put a bash plate on it. Let's put, let's put some aerodynamics down here. I think it would be a cool look for commercial truck at least an option i think we could build this on the line uh at lordstown i think it would be a you know i think it would surprise everybody i don't think they would expect to get something like this anyway again this is a baja racer but let's let's model it on this okay let's have some running boards you know whatever it's a cool looking truck let's let's uh let's run with that and I wanted to mention this, too. I was listening to Q's views and uh, uh, a couple other videos and stuff. Now, here's the thing. On this stock sale, you know, the $4 million revolving line of uh, credit they have with YA. Okay, YA, YA2 or whatever it is. You guys are going to have to do your own uh, due diligence on this. But I believe there's a floor on on the price so even if the stock goes down to one dollar i think they have to purchase at 748 is the minimum it says meets equals or exceeds this price and but it's based on the closing of, of, of the day this this deal was done so this this number may have changed 
but I just want to say, you guys can do your own due diligence on this. This is this is the min, I believe. So even if that uh, even if that price drops, okay. And let's see here. Oh, that's empty. Anyway, guys, that's about it. And uh, this is the uh, video. I just wanted to go over, you know, there's some some exciting things that could happen at Lordstown. They um, are, um, you know, I see these headlines. Lordstown to rent out space. Well, it's not exactly space. What this is really is an EV incubator. They call this the Voltage Valley. They've got Case Western Reserve University, Kent State University, Youngstown State University, which has a great engineering school that's worked in the automobile industry for years, put out graduates that are all over the auto industry. They have a workforce, local. They have uh, a great plant that is up to date, full of robotics. They have extra space. They have a rail line. They have highways. This. It's not just a place to rent space. This is an incubator for the new economy, the new EV economy. And Lordstown is going to be that incubator, and that's my opinion. Anyway, I hope you guys like the video. If you get a second, uh, shoot out a uh, like and a subscribe. I hate asking for subscribes. But anyway, if you like the content. Anyway, I hope you like the video. I threw this together rather quickly to get it out. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.